What is going on, everybody? Welcome, all of you, 120 people that are probably going to watch this, <laughs> to episode number four of Guitar Rigs That Do Not Suck. All right. I mean, let's face it. This doesn't suck, right? I mean, does not suck. <laughs> fucking slams harder than your mom does, man. Jesus. That thing is fucking violent. All right, so what do we have today? As you know, I'm digging through my gear, putting stuff together. Some stuff is new, some stuff is old, some stuff is stuff I use all the time. But I just put together a simple rig every week for the fun of just slapping some shit together and having fun. All right? So first off, we have this. This is the only guitar that was ever bought for me in my life. Uh, I wanted this thing so bad. It looked so good. I mean, let's face it, it is stunning, right? The amount of work that's gone into this, this is no longer a cheap guitar, but for all intents and purposes, it was a $500 guitar, and I definitely got $500 worth of guitar. Michael Kelly guitars are absolute garbage. But according to people, I need to try the Michael Kellys that are out now, that uh, the people that originally owned Michael Kelly is back in control. Um, I very well might do that at some point, just so I can have some reference, because this was horrible. I had to put a lot of money into it, put in locking tuners, had a complete entire fret job done. I like, literally had to have the frets ripped out and redone. Uh, the pickups were Rocktron or something like that. Actually, uh, Rock Rockefeller. There was nothing rich about those pickups. They were fucking shit. But I ended up dumping one of my signature TDS racks. In the bridge, I put a real Tone Pros uh, locking bridge on there. Changed the pots out to good pots. All the electronics were changed out. So essentially, the only thing that's good on there was the wood. And the wood itself, I mean, the finish on it's great. The fretboard, with all that detail on that fretboard, actually is really, really nice. I have nothing bad to say about that. The neck is super comfortable. Great guitar. If you can find one of these used to mod it, you'll win. The, it, the wood and everything is great. But the fret job was atrocious. The tuners that were on it were absolute shit. The pickups were absolute shit. The electronics were beyond garbage. Yeah. So yeah, some modding. And this guitar is sick as hell. But my late wife Shelly bought it for me, so I'll never get rid of it. And uh, having my purple pickup on there is kind of like my little nod to her. The silver in the pickle. Pickle. <laughs> the silver in the pickle. Let's have some coffee, because clearly I need coffee. Drinking Death Wish this weekend. Going to the old haunt. All right. So, obviously, part of the rig is myself, my shitty handling of the guitar. Going into the Michael Kelly Patriot. That is going into the brand new. If you're watching this, maybe you've already tuned in and watched my demo of it. 
This is the Amber Spyglass version 2 from Witchlerm Audio. That is going into the Driftwood Mini Nightmare. And I'm using the hot channel on that with the high gain and the sizzle turned completely off. Um, just, I'm going to erase because, uh, yes, I had some very bad things to say about Driftwood. But uh, I really should have taken more time to get a hold of the guys at Driftwood. Especially Malik. Malik, again, I can't apologize enough for my behavior. That I was pretty shitty. Ain't gonna lie. I uh, unnecessarily just really shit on that company. And because he's a kind man and way better human being than I am, he paid to have this shipped all the way out and he redid it and sent it back. And this amp is a monster. It will not leave my collection. It stays. Uh, it is phenomenal. I don't know exactly what he fixed, but even if it was one wire, it made a world of difference. I mean, the noise gate works great in it. The boost is working great. I literally just have like a little EQ pedal hooked up to it just to kind of sculpt in things a little bit for myself. Um, it, she is a little bit of a chubby monkey, uh, the Driftwood. So having being able to toy around with the mids a little bit with the Amber Spyglass is really good. That's running out to my Jens Benz cab. Uh, the G Flex and it's loaded with Eminence DV77. It's mic'd up with an SM57 by Shua. Shua. Yeah, and that goes directly right into this camera. It's called a Zoom QN8 4K. It's the new one. It's the little one. That's it, man. That's everything. From stem to stern, cables all provided by Eric Levagoa of Levagoa Amplification. People always ask, like, what are those cables you're using? They're the ones that Eric makes, and they're phenomenal. It takes a minute to get used to remembering that the way of sound actually matters. <laughs> yeah, it took me a minute to get a hold of it, how all that works and be comfortable with it. But, yeah, the guy's a genius. He also makes a really good amp, which you'll probably see in next week's uh, Guitar Rigs That No Suck, and that's the Mr. Hector. But we're not here to talk about that right now. This is the rig. The Driftwood Mini Nightmare, paired up with the Amber Spyglass by Witchlorm Audio. This is the V2. Again, if you're interested in it, like, oh, wow, I wonder what that exactly that did. Go watch my uh, demo. It loaded up on Wednesday. So, yeah, that's it, man. Keep music evil. Bring metal to the children. Hey, check out all these vendors. I'd be a little cautious of the Michael Kelly thing, though. Just going to put that out there. I have not tried any of the new ones, so I cannot say nothing good about this company. All I know is this was a fucking turd. <laughs> that is now a great guitar. But I had to put a lot of money into it. This $500 guitar is now a... 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, a little over $1,100. Yeah. Became, it actually paid more in upgrades than what the guitar cost, but... It's a great guitar now, so for $1,100 still, you know, you're looking pretty good. Yeah. And, uh, you know, can't say anything good, anything more good about that mini nightmare. I know it's expensive. A lot of people shit on me, like, dude, why are you using such expensive gear? Well, at this point, I don't really have any super cheap gear. I mean, <laughs> I'm old. I'm 48. I'm not living in my mom's basement. Uh, you know, I've grown. I don't have a drinking problem. I don't have a drug problem. I don't have a woman problem. I don't have a women problem. <sighs> yeah. This is what I do. This is my fun. And I make these videos while I'm entertaining myself. So really what you're doing is just seeing me be an idiot at home by myself. Yeah. It happens. So again, keep music evil. Bring metal to the children. Don't be a dick. Subscribe to my shit. It does help, especially when companies want to send me something. If not, then... You know, you get stuck with the same old, same old, boring, done, basically off a of script bullshit that you get from everybody else. So, yeah, if you want someone's going to tell some jokes about your mom and make fun of the size of their own dick, I'm your guy. You want fat jokes? I've, been, I've heard them all. Some of them are actually really funny and I can go and tell them myself. But, yeah. Anyhow, have fun, man. And uh, every Friday until... And I might miss one from time to time, but on Fridays will be... Uh, Guitar rigs that don't suck. Eventually, I might put together one that's just fucking horrible. I might do an episode of guitar rigs that do suck, but 
I don't think I'm going to do it with anything I have in my room. Everything I have in here is A-plus equipment. I'm extremely fortunate. I don't ever think that I'm not because I would have never thunk in a million years I'd be sitting in a room with the shit that I have in here ever the day of my life. Yeah, it's a thing. All right. Very cool. Catch you guys in the next video. Later.